This is the last video of the week three series regarding spatial data. You can't talk about spatial data without talking about how that data is stored. In this week's lab assignment, you will see some of the practical applications and benefits of storing your data in a geodatabase. You may already be familiar with databases in general. They are an organized collection of data that attempts to model aspects of reality in a way that supports processing information. For example, modeling the availability of rooms in a hotel in a way that supports finding a hotel with vacancies. A geodatabase is the native data structure for GIS and is the primary data format used for editing and data management. Geodatabases work across a range of database management systems and file systems, come in many sizes, and have varying numbers of users. What puts the geo in geodatabases? If we recall from the first example about hotels, there's no mention of location. What if we asked about room availability within 50 miles of Tallahassee, Florida? That's when we would get the geo part of the geodatabase. When we look inside a geodatabase, we have aspatial data, such as tables, and relationship classes that are standard for any database. A geodatabase also has spatial information, such as feature data sets, feature classes, topology, and geometric networks. In addition, a geodatabase may manage our raster catalog or several raster data sets. Database relationships come in four main types. One-to-one -one database relationships is where one record in a database corresponds with one record in another database. It's a very simple relationship. We also have one-to-many relationships. This is where one record in a database corresponds to more than one record in a table. An example of this is properties and property owners, where owners could own more than one property. This would be a one-to-many relationship. There's also a many-to-one relationship, which is the exact reverse. There are many ways that you can connect data within a database. The two most common ways are through relate or join. A relate is a temporary connection between two tables based on a common key. The two tables are temporarily connected, but they remain as complete separate entities. This allows you to combine two or more tables at the same time. All four relationships that we discussed are able to work in a relate. A join is useful for combining two tables. Joins work best with a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many relationship, and you can create a permanent join on the data. When performing joins in a GIS, it's a good idea to validate the join to make sure you're on the right track. Raster databases have value attribute tables, which are very similar to histograms. Each pixel will have a value, and these values can be charted. These describe the frequency or number of times a specific value has occurred. Using raster data, we can also calculate the area based on the pixel size and the count values. In using GIS, there are specific tools available to help us extract information from these raster data sets to make use of them. How does the data get there? Let's talk about the basics of data entry. It's got to be done and someone's got to do it and it's usually the newbie. There is a single data entry where attributes or specific information is edited on an ad hoc basis. There's multiple entry data, which includes calculating information using a field calculator or doing some other advanced calculation. Why is this useful? It can be very useful to calculate values or calculate fields based on other fields so that it's quick to pull up and easy to interpret. If we're looking at population data and we have counties and we have population data for counties, it might be useful to create a field called population density to calculate the number of people per square mile and put that into a new field. This information could then be pulled in quickly and used to symbolize a map and display information professionally. Map accuracy and spot checking data entry is very important. It's very easy to make a simple mistake 
and those simple mistakes can compound when those data entry fields are used for calculations. When you add a field, you specify if it's a text or number, the length of the field, and think about the future implications and future use of that specific field. Sometimes it's important to delete fields when there's duplicate information or obsolete data in your data set. Extra fields take up storage space and they can lower productivity time. If you're sharing data, it's a good idea to clean up that data and remove some of those unneeded fields. The only thing to remember is once you delete data out of your database, the data is gone. So think very carefully before you delete a field. This concludes the week three series of presentations on spatial data. There are a lot of vocabulary terms that you need to remember. While these presentations were outlining what spatial data is, the UWF Spatial Data Lab will help you see these concepts come to life. I encourage everyone to use the discussion board for issues and start the lab early. This one is a long one, but you'll do great. Thanks and have a great week.